you know, it, it's such a poorly written Asian character, if I may add. Like, I don't see what Soul did anything wrong. It's like what st- stabbing the weird black thingy, we- weird black entity. There's no reason why he wouldn't react the way he did when you know in episode seven when the mom transformed into that whatever thing. We don't know. We don't even. We, it was never explained what that thing was meant to do. Leslie and doesn't then, know. She, she yeah. said, "I think he, she's turning into the Force, so she doesn't know." <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, wait. So that was supposed to. Was that her reasoning? Like, That's what, what Leslie said. Yeah. That's I so think stupid. that she, her and Osh, uh, May are turning into the Force. And it was inspired by like some anime she was watching at the time or something. That's so dumb. So uh, I do want to read this. Uh, I do want to go over just, just this headline. I'm not going to read the entire thing, but this comes to us from Bounding in the Comics right over here. And the, the website's sort of acting up. It says, the headline reads, The accolade showrunner at Leslie Hetland believes Star Wars series final fight scenes tops The Phantom Menace. Was it the Matrix as well? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she's oh, confident. I, there are some things where you read like that, and you're like, do, "How big a fan of the original kind of stuff were you?" If you think what you did beats it, because that was the best fight of the season between those two. Mm-hmm. But I don't think anyone was particularly impressed, especially when you did the jump out backwards, crouching tiger, hidden dragon nonsense. I think that probably ruined it for most people at that point. Yeah, it was very floaty. I'm like, what is this? Like, mm-hmm. why are you using like wire? Like, like the wiring looks very floaty. I'm like, what's going on? Like when they were fighting, I'm like, this is. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, May and Osha, like especially Osha, who has never shown any kind of martial artist prowess or anything like that. Like it's literally on par with her sister. But then mm-hmm. there's... There, I guess their, their, you know, their reasoning was they're actually supposed to be one person, and that's yeah. But the they don't why. share experiences. Like she was trained by the Sith, and he, and the other one was trained by the Jedi. You could have two entirely different fighting techniques. You may have been born the same person, but you had different experiences all your entire life. So yeah. you've essentially diverged into different people. But I, I don't think Leslie is intelligent enough to keep that idea in her head i think mm-hmm. she literally just thought they're the same person they must be the same <laughs> I, I think that's as deep as it goes yep yo uh yo alan ing yo ing the merciless that's in the chat yo, uh, with the five dollar super chat says son i rob you <laughs> 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 yo, thank you thank you thank you dad for the five dollar super chat thank you but I, I, I would 100%. If someone was choking me and I had one few... It would be an insult of some sort. I, I would try and like make them feel as awful as possible if that's what's going to happen. No, no, it's okay. It's fine. Oh. Yeah, that, yeah that, that choking scene... I, I guess like this This is the first time I, since this predates uh, you know, the, even The Phantom Menace like, by so much. Like First time force choke and her force choke it looks like she's like holding some kind of like I don't know. It looks really like, weird. And then the whole pinching and the kyber yeah, crystal thing, like her blood, like goes into the kyber crystal, and, and that's how it becomes like the red lightsaber. Red. The, the the only reason I even kind of think I know what that was is because I had to go and watch Star Wars Theory's video on it. And and okay. this is the issue. Um, like a, apparently, force crystals are alive, and you can like force them to your will, and it changes colors. Okay, that's never been explained in the movie. Like. If you've got all of this lore in the background, if you then move it into more mainstream television, you have to explain it again. You can't you can't simultaneously throw out the expanded universe and also expect everyone's read it. So mm-hmm. I, I have a problem with any of that kind of stuff. Like the Force Ghost or like the Force Sith creature thing that whatever the mother turned into should have been explained what it was. You can't just have that happen and be like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I yeah, I, and the thing is that like I me and Gray are relatively normies. Like, we don't know anything about the EU. Oh, I, yes, I am. I, I don't know much Star Wars stuff. I know the Old Republic better than I know anything else, just because I enjoyed the games. So and that's the kind of the area I prefer. Now, what are your... I, I, and this, I know this news is like old news now, but what are your thoughts on Leslie Headland saying that, oh, I think I might do Knights of the Old Republic next. Uh, next. I, 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 I don't think they'd let her. If they're not going to give her a season two, they're not going to give her another season. Like Okay. You, you, once, you have to prove you could be a success before they give you another IP. And I think I think even Disney would understand that they're running out of things to steal. 
And so if they, if they want a fresh start in a new era, the Old Republic probably would be next. And I don't think they would give that to a previously failed person yeah. if they don't trust her with a season two. Now, I, I, I have covered that I think they might get a season two simply because of their tactic, which is basically, isn't Manny Jacinto so hot? Look at all the fans. They all love Manny Jacinto. <laughs> They'll see even more of him in season two. And while I, I don't even think that's pitched at the audience, I think that's pitched at the top of Disney. And I, I think like Kathleen Kennedy and everything will just be like, yeah, he's gorgeous, isn't he? Oh, we, the, the fans all love him because we do. Uh, <laughs> and so I actually think it's quite a clever like Hail Mary to try and get a season two. Yeah, the, the thirst trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, after Rings of Power, after it had finished, everyone was doing their honest reviews and stuff and came out and said it was crap. It's not really happened with this. Some have, but a lot of them are like, no, this is the future of Star Wars. This is the future. Manager Kinto's hot, isn't he? Because this is the future of Star Wars. They all mention him and they're like, oh, he was, wasn't it great, that episode? So, uh, no, I, I, I think he's probably their only hope at this point. Yeah. Gray, um, don't, how, how do you feel now, now that like a, there's a hot Filipino in Star Wars? How do you feel? Yeah, is he even legit though? I, I, I think he's like he's Filipino raised in America, so it doesn't really uh, Filipino me, doesn't Canadian, really, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really count in my opinion. He was a he was born in Manila but emigrated to Canada as a toddler. Ah, he, well, yeah, yeah that, that, that's what a lot of them do, like a lot of them uh migrate to Canada, so but he just did it at a very young age with his family. But yeah, uh, usually the cultural disparity is not, it's not going to be the same anymore with a person who was raised in Canada person versus a person yeah. who was raised here. Okay, yeah. well, I've got another question for you then, because in the GQ interview, uh, he starts playing the Filipino card, right? Um, right. And he, he starts talking about how he's diverse and how all these, all these Filipino people can now see themselves in Hollywood because he's there. <laughs> um, and he, he talks about the, um, the dogfighting in Top Gun Maverick and said it was an incredible feeling because even throughout shooting, we were able to meet people in the Navy, in the Air Force, and a good amount of them are Filipino. Being able to represent that for them and have their face kind of represented in me, it meant a lot to them. Oh no, man. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh man. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably one of the very few minority who even knows what the acolyte is, so I, I'm pretty sure that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, uh, but okay, I I can see the the thirst trap, right? It's because originally, like he came off as like a, like a scrawny kid, you know, like it's like he's just a guy who's like a potion maker at the shop, and then we find out that oh, he's actually, uh, you know, a Sith, and then of course the um, where he basically he goes skinny dipping, right? And um, there's there's a lot of girls who are on uh who are on uh, X saying, wow, I understand why Osha turned to the dark side now. Mm -hmm. She wanted that lumpy ass, which was like, was well, okay. He, after episode, I think it was five, where they had the big battle, uh, he wasn't supposed to be in the series again. He was a season two arc. But Leslie Headland said when they put him in the costume and they saw his arms, they realized that there would be riots in the streets of the fans. And so they rewrote the rest of the season to like basically crowbar him in. No so everything way. you've seen, the entire romance, it was all like written afterwards. And oh, just off no. how he looked. Oh uh, man. It like if they say, oh, we don't want to objectify people. They, they still, oh no, they don't oh no. You... He's <laughs> th there's a bounding into comics article where he goes, the reason for the thirst of him is because he what is it, gender swaps the hypersexualization of actors. Because Leslie's been on about how um he takes on a lot of female traits like he's very soft spoken um his clothing is very flowy all that kind of stuff uh, it's weird because leslie headland shouldn't be interested in him at all especially yeah. she's got a wife right and yet mm -hmm. the way she talks about him definitely sounds like she is so i'm i'm confused i'm confused if she's confused yeah, that's insane. Yo, Pythagoras with the one month says Letly stealing Darth Plagueis equals Plague Juris. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh. Oh, thank you so much for the one month, uh, Pythagoras. And Johnny KS just coming in with a five gifted membership. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. Is she bi? I, she could be. Yeah, very likely based on what uh, she's I mean, give, given her comments. <laughs> See, discount Ezra Miller. Now, here's the thing this is actually it. 
like I, okay i think that manny is a lot better than ezra for sure yeah right? i think I, I think he's a lot better I, I think he can act better and you know he doesn't lean into the you know like oh well, he is leaning into the fact that he's filipino but but i would say it's like he he's a lot better than ezra for sure but yeah, I, um, I think he just kind of has to say the filipino shit given what's going on in hollywood so he has to build that mm-hmm. narrative if he does it he's out he, you probably won't see him again in any of the prominent tv shows well, so well if if i'm right that the the interviews are basically pitched to get a season two so it's not really at the audience then it would make sense that that was the play like uh he's diverse everybody loves him he's a heartthrob uh that's basically all disney wants in the show we can get romance out of it kind of thing so he does tick every box and to be honest i think most people agree he was the best thing about the show so yeah i actually he, he is the best thing like a drinker upgraded him to premium Ezra. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, did, he, did, he did, he did, he did, he did. That's so funny. So, um, this article that uh, Disbrew found, I guess there's a lot of thirst over um, Manny. Uh, Manny, as he said, how the acolytes Manny Jacinto brought sexy back to Star Wars. So it says right over here. It's the byline says, "I think baby oil goes a long way." Oh my mm-hmm. god, this guy Yang Yi Go. Oh no. Oh man. Oh. This entire article, I think, was written with that guy's tongue on the floor. <laughs> like, it, I don't, this is just like pandering, kind of, oh my god, I can't believe I got to meet him. <laughs> it's that kind of tone. Yeah, this is insane. Uh, yeah, so so right over here, uh, I've got a bone to pick with Manny Jacinto in his early last Monday afternoon, the day before the 7th, and uh, uh, Penn ultimate episode of uh, if Star Wars series to act like the first season's debuts on Disney Plus. We've got both logged on to Zoom for our third interview in the three months. We have built up something of a report. Uh, I thought over the course of those first two conversations, but since the last time we talked, I've come to realize he'd spent uh, sizable swaths of our previous chats lying straight to my face. Yeah, oh, I mean... It- it's a really long article, so and it seems to have been off multiple interviews. So that was before we found out he was basically a, a Sith Lord. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the paragraph under those pictures is probably the best one, or the next, the next Let's couple. See. Yeah, that that's easily the best paragraph of the whole thing. Okay, the, by so, contrast. Okay, uh, do you do you want to do you want to read it? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I can do. Yes, yeah, I mean, so you, by... you have better voice than us. <laughs> By contrast, when the stranger is first unmasked, unmasked in the midst of a brutal Jedi killing spree in episode five. So this is after they found out he's evil and he's just murdered all of the good guys. The camera movements and moody lighting appear engineered to maximize Jacinto's heart throbbiness. His exposed arms are as taut and defined as the chassis of a Ferrari. His glistening cheekbones, bisected by a pair of meticulously swooping bangs, appear even sharper and more menacing than a lightsaber he's gripping. An episode later, the show doubled down, having the stranger and his abs bathe buck naked in a hot spring while flirting brazenly with Osha. Uh, sample dialogue of the scene after Osha picks up the stranger's lightsaber. It feels good, doesn't it? To hold <laughs> one in your hands again. <laughs> and even the next one, it goes down to the audience reaction. The internet, as you might expect, has suffered a complete and utter knee-quivering meltdown in his wake. I started chewing cement, said one. Manny Jacinto is about to lead me to places I wouldn't even go with a gun. And it caused time to write an entire article called The Rise of the Thirst Trap Villain. (laughs) Oh, man. If you click that link, The Rise of the Thirst Trap Villain, it takes you through to one which includes Sauron from Rings of Power. Oh, no. This is basically, aren't we attracted to evil? (laughs) That's what what all this is. (laughs) It's like it, it's like the thing where like you know like the um, the girls are attracted to the bad boys is yes. like that trope, right? And yeah, it, it is. I think federal criminals reproduce at a significantly higher rate than non-federal criminals. So it's yeah, completely borne out. But it is weird that this has suddenly happened because it's, it's simultaneously at a time where it's like, well, hot women, well, you can't have those, but we can have the evil hot villains, <laughs> and it's like, okay, there's double standards, and then there's whatever this is. Yeah. 
Oh man, but yeah, like I I I was reading uh, what's it called again? Uh, Three hundred mirrors, Lily, and even uh, Melanie Mac was like they're, they're like thirsting over. It's like, oh, he's my type. He's perfect for me. To to be fair, <laughs> and I think Melanie Mac would have said this herself. Her t her taste in guys is wild. Uh, uh you know Jujutsu Kaisen? Yeah, yeah, she likes the Scarface dude, like the the uh... main villain. Of <laughs> like the, the most of the series, the guy who just wipes out entire regions of people. Yeah, it's like okay, <laughs> that's funny. But yeah, it's a uh, it's just this whole debacle with uh Star Wars is just it's um it, even right over here from the, the official Star Wars uh X accounts. I still can't believe we watched her bleed her Kyber crystal. That sounds so gross, given the fact that she's a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.